Medical professionals on the front lines have likened their experience during the coronavirus pandemic to fighting a battle in a war. They are on the front lines of trying to save lives while we mostly just hear about the numbers affected and the number of people who have died. So what must that be like for health professionals who are in the thick of this pandemic? I am joined now by Chicago ER Dr. Scott Samlin from Mount Sinai Hospital. Dr. Samlin, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Tell me how long you've been an ER doctor and compare your experiences in the past with what you've had to deal with today. So I've been an ER doctor for 16 years now. Um, this is the scariest uh, part of being a doctor that I've ever experienced. Um, dealing with COVID-19 um, is something that we've never seen before. And just hear you say this is the scariest you've ever experienced is alarming because you deal with some pretty traumatic things every single day. How many patients are you seeing that are coming into your ER that are actually suspected of having COVID-19? And how can you be sure with the shortness of tests available? So I would say around 60 to 70 percent of patients that we see have COVID-19. Wow. Um, it's difficult to determine who has COVID-19, but we use deductive reasoning. Um, we look at their white count, we test them for influenza, we do a chest x-ray. And again, because the test takes three to four days to come back, we use deductive reasoning to diagnose these patients with suspected COVID-19. You know, we, as I said before we came to you, we hear so much every day about the numbers of people that are being affected. Um, you are dealing with this in real time. We've heard so much about how elderly and those with underlying conditions are at highest risk. Has this been your experience or what are you seeing in the ER as far as the age of your patients? So COVID-19 doesn't discriminate. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I apologize. No problem. Go ahead. You said, okay. you said COVID-19 COVID does not discriminate. COVID-19 does not discriminate. Rich, old, young, poor, people with comorbidities, without comorbidities, which is pre-existing conditions, we don't know how it's going to affect each individual person. That's a scary thing about this disease. Mm -hmm. So we've been hearing a lot about shortage of the uh, PPEs, the personal protective equipment. Uh, what are you guys doing in the uh, ER to make sure that you are safe and that you have enough of this equipment to maintain not only the safety of yourself, but also the patients that you're seeing? So fortunately, I work at Mount Sinai Hospital and the administrative staff has been excellent and to get us the supplies that we need. Yes, it is true. There is a scarcity of supplies and we always need more. But our hospital is working around the clock, especially the people work in administration to secure us PPE. They are diligent. They are reaching out to local manufacturers, business people, people who have uh, any type of welding companies and getting the supplies we need. And they've been excellent. And they make rounds every four hours to make sure we have the equipment we need to take care of these patients. So they've been excellent about that. But I heard that One you guys actually built a, a physician protective box uh, that was made for you by a local plastic manufacturer. Tell me about that and how that works and why you felt you needed it. So this was made from our friends over at Chicago City Plastics. Or, um, what it is is that it's a plastic box and it goes over the, the face of a patient. The reason why we do that is because when we intubate a patient, we're at increased risk for the droplets. So with the box, we can put our hands through the plexiglass box and intubate the patients without exposing ourselves, our nurses, or our respiratory techs. And so then my next question is to you, have any of your colleagues become ill? Luckily at Mount Sinai, no. But again, um, at other hospitals, the scarcity of testing is, is what's preventing us to know the real numbers. So I want to ask you on a personal level, you're the father of two young children. You told me uh, we we're looking at a beautiful family picture of you guys. Um, how has this affected you on a personal level? Um, any concerns that you have of, of bringing it home? Are you trying to stay away? How are you handling this and how are you doing? Well, first of all, thank you so much for asking. Um, I really do appreciate it. Um, 
So I have a routine when I go home. I spray isopropyl alcohol on my keys and anything I've touched. I change in the garage, strip down to my underwear, drop my clothes in the washing machine, run straight to the shower. And the hardest part is that, again, I have such little kids, two and one, and my wife and I have to tell them that daddy needs to distance himself because I don't want to expose my family because being a healthcare worker, and this is for all of us in the front lines, we don't want to expose our families and friends to this. Oh, I can't imagine. That must be very difficult. I'm sure you come home, um, you know, being an ER doctor, you're used to seeing people die. You're used to seeing just horrible situations. But I bet you're coming home with a new perspective every day. And what would you want the general public that's listening to you right now talk about this experience? What would you want everyone to know? So first of all, the outpouring of public support has been unbelievable. I've never been prouder to be a doctor and I've never been prouder to be working in the ER with my dedicated nurse and techs and respiratory therapists and ICU doctors who every single day put their lives on the line. Um, the outpouring of restaurants who are trying to struggle are, and trying to get by are delivering us food. The people who reached out to us to donate N95s, goggles, respirators, anything we need They've just been doing it. We've asked for scarcity of these supplies and they're just donated in bulk. I've never been prouder of being an ER doctor as well as being from Chicago. Um, and I can say to the people out there, look, I have, I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. I know it's difficult. I know how hard it is to stay home, but don't look about at you're stuck at home. Look about it as you're safe at home. Oh, that's such an important thing to say, and I think some great words to inspire the people who are watching. We do have a viewer question for you, because a lot of people have been wondering how we can help out, and Brittany is standing by with that. Brittany? Yeah, well, Doctor, I first want to just say thank you for everything that you are doing and uh, continuing to wish you that you stay safe and your family as well. Our question comes from Linda, and she says, I have several friends and family working in hospitals on the front lines of this. What's the best way that we can support what you're doing at this incredibly difficult time? Is it through food deliveries? Is it just staying home? We feel so helpless while you do such important work. So Linda, thank you for the question and thank you for so, so much for the support. Um, so working in the ER, um, we are running ragged, eight, 10, 12 hour shifts. A lot of times we don't stop to eat, we don't drink, you don't use the restroom. So food is, is wonderful. But what I can say is the most helpful thing is to reach out to your friends who are in healthcare. Reach out to the people who are the nurses and the techs and the respiratory therapists and just tell them, thank you, we support you. We love you. That's all we need. Well, we certainly all feel that way. And finally, I understand you have a GoFundMe page that you just started to buy equipment. How's that going? And have you been able to get what you need? Tell everybody how they can help out with that. Thank you so much. So we did start a GoFundMe a couple of weeks ago, and the response has been overwhelming. So far, we have been sourcing with two of my friends um, over 400 masks, 1,500 N95s, goggles, gowns that are coming in by shipments, and we've been distributing to all of our friends and colleagues who are in need. And, and finally, I think, uh, you know, there are still some people out there who are saying, you know, this is b being blown out of proportion. To those people who still don't believe, what do you have to say to them? Look, I've been an ER doctor for 16 years. I've seen SARS, I've seen Ebola, I've done medical missions in Guatemala. This is the only thing that scares me. Please, please do your part. Stay home. We're working every single day on the front lines to protect you. Please, please, I plead, stay home. Do your part. Dr. Scott Samlin with Mount Sinai Hospital, thank you for all you do. Please thank all of your colleagues and thank you for your service. We are very proud that you are one of our own Chicago doctors. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll be right back.